welcome back to your Monday night Fulham Fix, uh, your fortnightly show about everything to do with Fulham for you guys, the fans. And joining us for our very first Premier League Fulham Fix um, of the season, one half of our match day commentary dream team, uh, Mr. Jamie Reid. Jamie, how are you? I've been very well. Delighted that the new season is nearly upon us. Oh yeah, it's going to be it's going to be an exciting one. I'm starting to uh, starting to get the buzz now. Starting to get the buzz is almost upon us. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Great back up to be back up in the Premier League. Eight is where we deserve to be. It is where we deserve to be. Uh, also joining us for our very first uh, Fulham fix of the Premier League campaign, a man who finally signed that ting. Uh, officially a Fulham player through and through. He's our rock in the middle, Harrison Reed. Harrison, how are you, man? I'm great. How are you? Yeah, not too bad at all. Uh, yeah, me and Jamie were just saying uh, how buzzed we are. We did finally sign that thing. Uh, how does it feel to, to now officially be a Fulham player through and through? So it was great, to be honest. Uh, I can finally relax now and uh, get my head down and work hard. And I'm looking forward to the season. Um, it's great to it's great to be here, to be honest, and to be able to call this my home now um, for the foreseeable future. It's it's a great feeling for me and, and my family. I don't think I've ever experienced um, such a, a barrage of um, tweets from fans relentlessly. Uh, even, you know, I'd tweet something out about Fulham or whatever. And even in my responses, it was uh, tell Harrison to sign, tell Harrison, well, as Harrison signed. So I don't know, Jamie, you had a similar thing with any of Absolutely. your tweets. Yeah, yeah, um, rightly so, because he was such a rock. I think that is the uh, the best word. I can't think of many players that when we lose control of the football and the opposition have got it, he wins it back so quickly. He's very good at using the football effectively. He is a complete midfield player and we're so lucky to have him in the engine room. Absolutely. Harrison, were you aware uh, of these relentless tweets? You must have been at it in them tons of times, no? Yeah, I was relaxing on holiday on my phone, constantly going. Um... No, it was great. It was great, obviously, to to see the fans' response uh, after the playoff final throughout the season, to be fair. Um, I was at, on the beach relaxing and I was getting these tweets through and uh, to say to say I wasn't uh, tempted to, to like a few and respond to a few just to give them a little bit of a tease would be a lie. Um, but I held off and obviously once it was once it was released, it was a great feeling to then have the influx of uh, messages again and uh, buzzing, yeah. So did you know that... that you were going to sign uh, from the end of the playoff final. Was that always 100% in, in your mind? In my mind, yeah, it was, it was no question. It was just about getting it done, I guess. And these things take time. And for me, obviously, getting the, the updates day to day, it was always positive and it's going to happen. But for the fans, um, they don't know what's going on. And obviously, it's, it's a long way. It was a long way. Um, so, um, yeah, I was fully confident that it was going to happen. And it's, uh, I couldn't wait to sign it and, uh, and be a fun player. There can't be too many moments in life uh, that sort of feel that good. You've just been promoted to the Premier League. You're, you're on holiday. Where did you go on holiday? Uh, Mykonos. Mykonos. You're on holiday in Mykonos. Uh, you know, you're chilling out on the beach and your phone is just full of love and admiration. I mean, that must be... Um, I would that, did that make it a really, really easy decision? Yeah, it certainly helps. I mean, the love from the fans throughout the whole season, not just them, was was incredible and I really felt it. Um, and yeah, of course, it, it made my decision and my thinking so much easier knowing that the fans were fully behind it and, um, and so were the club. And, and obviously for me, it's, it's about playing and making the fans proud and to know that I did that last season is a really good thing. Oh, yeah, you really did. You really did. Uh, and it almost, uh, it must be as well, a uh, very, very nice feeling. I think after a series of... Um, of loan moves, obviously, uh, from Southampton, uh, as it Norwich and Blackburn came to Fulham. It must be really nice now to be able to settle down somewhere and call somewhere your home. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's been in my thinking this season. It's uh, The moment I stepped through the door, I felt that this was the place that matched my ambition, that it was a perfect fit for me. Um, and then it was over to me to, to, give, to give the club the reason um, and prove myself to the manager and the club to actually sign me permanently and it was it was then up to me to perform in the games and um, thankfully I did that and we came to the agreement and, uh, and I'm over for it. And also for your uh, your partner as well to, to be able to actually um, settle somewhere as well, like to actually, because you must have stayed in sort of many kind of sort of half places as it were, you know, 
there's no point unpacking everything because you know you're going to move on probably next season mm-hmm. um it must have been a nice uh for yourself but also for her to be able to kick back what was it, it was a phrase my dad uses uh, which is uh, put, is it put your feet under the table that the phrase table. i'm looking yeah, at you yeah. jamie i don't know why i think that is the phrase yeah and yeah. it's lovely to have harrison with his feet under the table because there we go come in if i can at this point and yeah. talk about that because I guess it's a little bit like being the new kid in school, isn't it? That when you're going from place to place, you've touched on the fact that you want to find a home, Ivan, and I can pick up on that. But when you're a player, Harrison, how quickly do you realise that the place where you are, i.e. Fulham, and we're delighted that uh, you've chosen Fulham, how quickly do you realise, yeah, do you know what? I'd love to stay here long term. Yeah, for me, it was it was very quick and... With the transfer last season, the loan move, with the option with the option to turn into a permanent, uh, it was always in my mind that I needed to, to come here and prove myself and, and to, to make that permanent. Um, from the first conversation with the manager to the first time I kicked the ball on the training ground, um, I came home and spoke to, my, spoke to my girlfriend and I think she got the feeling from me that this is where I wanted to be uh, calling home. And she she's obviously from um, 45 minutes down the road, so she was thrilled. I dragged her to Norwich, I dragged her to Blackburn. Um, and now to be living here, it's, it's great for us both. And how, how close are you to the cottage where you're staying? You don't have to give up your uh, your actual address. Yeah. But, um, Just have a location on it. Yeah, yeah. Um, do, do a little I'm, drop in. Yeah. Uh, no, I'm, so I'm, I'm in Surrey, so uh, about 45 minutes to the cottage and 15 nice. to the training nice. ground, so inside the old... Perfect, perfect. Uh, well, listen, we've got a lot to talk about. Uh, and before we look forward to this weekend and the start of our Premier League campaign, uh, we're going to look back briefly and discuss our big three. And this is the point in the show uh, where we look back and discuss the big three talking points in the world of Fulham, usually from the last uh, couple of weeks. But as we've been uh, in lockdown, there haven't been um, we haven't done these for a few months. Uh, so we're going to discuss our big, t- uh, big three talking points from uh, the last month or so. And of course, number one has to be our playoff final against Brentford um I mean first up how was uh how was the playoff final for you Harrison how was it being at Wembley I know it must have been pretty surreal without any fans there yeah it was amazing um the build-up of the whole day we stayed over at the hotel the night before and, and waking up and pulling the curtains and seeing the arch and walking for a coffee down Wembley Way and and seeing the stadium and knowing that that's where you need to perform tonight um <coughs> The day as a whole was, was amazing to look back on. Um, we turned up, we performed, um, and we got the win and to back to the Premier League where we where we belong. Um, but like you touched on about the fans, it's obviously bitterly disappointing not to share that share that journey and share that day with, with them. Um, and that's probably the only the only negative of the whole day. To be honest, it was it was amazing to to get the win for the club and the fans. Um, it's something that I will always always remember. Do you find it easy to sleep before a big game like that? Uh, I usually do, but that's probably one of the biggest, well, the biggest game I've played in as, of, of my career. And um, put your head on the pillow the, on the night before and you're constantly thinking of the outcome and your performance. And um, I think I struggled for about an hour to get to sleep and then you're thinking, oh, I'm going to be tired the next day. Um, but I got to sleep all right and um, it was the longest day in the world, the day of the game. Um, obviously with the 7.45 kickoff. Um, you just wanted to, to be there and to wake up and have your breakfast and, and play but it wasn't to be and, but looking back on it now it was, it was an amazing day to really soak up the atmosphere and you saw a few fans floating around Wembley when we went for coffee and, and it was an amazing day Nice and to be fair we, we tend to do um, pretty well in the evenings the evening games tend to be our thing but... Yeah I picked up on that early on when we were playing Friday night games we kept winning and Saturday 3 o'clock turned, uh, turned into a bit of a, bit of a nightmare sometimes but and over the course of the season, it was it was obviously we got the job done. Uh, Jamie, how was it for you? Uh, this is your second uh, second Wembley final with Fulham. How, how how did it compare? Well, we got a quite brilliant record, haven't we, over recent times at Wembley with uh, the two wins from two. So it was absolutely fantastic from the first moment right until the final whistle. And I think Harrison sort of touched on the fact we went and we got the job done. And that's kind of how it felt to uh, to me and to Jim commentating and watching on. Away to our left-hand side, we could see the players who weren't involved. We could see the bench just in front of us. And then we could see all the players out there working so hard. You kind of get an even better 
atmosphere, if you like, in your mind, perhaps without fans. I know that might sound really bizarre and I'd love fans to be in the stadium. Of course I would. But you can hear what's going on. You can hear the players shouting. Perhaps you get a better sort of viewpoint in your mind. And it was just great to see everybody going away with their business. Harrison flying into tackles, making sure that he won the ball back, giving it yeah. to the base. Absolutely brilliant, wasn't it, uh, from start to finish. And do you know what? I just felt the boys were in control from the first whistle, Ivan, and it's so, so pleasing as somebody watching on as a fan, getting that sort of vibe. Yeah. No, I agree. I, I, I felt, weirdly, I was very, very nervous. Of course we were. Uh, you know, we'd, had, we'd struggled against Brentford twice um, this season. But at no point did it feel like they were... They were ever really a threat. I don't, Harrison, I don't know how you feel about that. Were you nervous, firstly, about facing Brentford, knowing we'd, you know, twice we'd come up against them in the season and, and uh, twice we'd lost? It's a funny one because you'd think, yes, you would be, but I felt like, especially in the home game, we performed really well and it was the last 10 minutes where we had a couple of sloppy goals. But going into the game, I felt that they weren't ever going to beat us three times in, in a season. And... Um, Obviously, there was a little bit of talk before the game, which worked in our favour at the end of the day. And um, we were fired up and the manager played a massive part before the game. He shared about his experiences uh, at Wembley and captain in the country. And he said it's all about being calm and executing. Um, and I think that played a massive part in the game. And personally, did that, I can't remember which player it was now um, for Brentford, who said that Fulham fear us. Uh, I can't remember. But did, 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 really did, that, that, yeah. Yeah. did that help? Does, yeah. you hear that? Does that work in your favour for you? Yeah, it can only work in our favour. It's a little bit of extra motivation. and uh, Not that we needed it, to be honest. But, um, of course, when he's talking before the game about them sorts of things, um, it comes back to bite you sometimes. It certainly did. And it, and it certainly did. Uh, they, they did seem to bottle it. I've got to ask you as well, Jamie, um, how was Jim? How was Jim prior to kick-off and... Um, uh, yeah, how was he after? I mean, I know he's. I mean, he, is, he especially hates Brentford. I think it's because he lives in Brentford, and his neighbours are all Brentford fans. And I mean, he really. I mean, when you speak to him about Brentford, especially, there's no love there at all. There's certainly not. No, there's certainly not. In fact, there's a lot of loathing, I would say, and uh, perhaps yeah. stronger words than that. He despises Brentford. He really does. So to get the job done and put in such a good performance, Ivan, mean, it was absolutely brilliant. He was like a kid at Christmas to start with. And let's just put it this way. It was almost like he was on fizzy sweets and uh, fizzy drinks. He was so hyped up for it. And he really did enjoy it. And do you know what? It was almost like the culmination of a real hard season because the players seemed to get better and better. They understood their jobs. They understood their roles in the team. And I'd just like to get Harrison's sort of thought on that, Ivan, because you have to think to yourself, Scott was a quite wonderful midfield player. You mentioned about him telling the whole team what they needed to do at Wembley. And he'd had that experience captaining England. What's Scott like to you, Harrison, because you play a similar sort of position? How good has he been as a mentor to you? Yeah, he's been top. Um, obviously, it's in the same position that he played and to have that knowledge and experience uh, working alongside it every single day and he's always there for me and to, to help me and to guide me and he knows all the pictures that I'm seeing on the pitch he knows where the pressure's coming and he really simplifies the game for me um, leading, leading into the game um, on match day um, he's speaking to me throughout making me making sure I'm understanding what he wants from me in, in, in that game and um, he makes it very very clear and simple what he, what he needs from me and that obviously then helps me to go out and execute the game plan um, so he's been great for me and he's still better than me when he joins in <laughs> <laughs> nice uh, right our number two talking point um, from our big three has to be Joe Bryan uh, that free kick especially um, Harrison were you aware that, that that was what was about to be attempted or were you waiting for a cross into the box I'm going to take some credit now. I whispered in his ear <laughs> yeah. uh, we spoke before in the week um, how aggressive and we saw in the, in the previous playoff games how aggressive the goalkeeper is um, on wide free kicks and he wants to come and collect everything. Um, and probably the only player in, I think it was 115th minute, um, to have the power to execute that from the distance is Joe Bryan. Yeah. Um, and when the gaffer pulled him over and I looked over, I said, he's definitely going to have to go for this. Um, so I was fully aware of what was happening. I even tried to point to, to Mitro to sort of 
make Brentford think we're going to put this back post. Um, and as soon as it left his foot, it was, I had a perfect view of it going in and it was amazing. So, man, you were starting to get into the kind of the, the tactical mindset, starting to tease them as well. So, I mean, it, it was an incredible. Yeah, that's right. 40 yeah. yards with that sort of power. <laughs> I mean, did, did you think he had it in his locker? It's, I mean, especially at that point in the game as well, when yeah, you got five totally. legs. Yeah, like I said, it's only Joe that could have done that at that moment. Um, in that minute after playing such an intense game, um, he's, he's a hybrid and he, could, he can do that. Um, and I was pretty confident he could do it. And I think we've seen Neymar try it, but not quite. Yeah, oh, yeah. Joe's failed, ahead failed miserably. Yeah. You've got to be, you got me special to be able to score one of those. Um, yeah. uh, Jamie, how did, how did it appear from the stands, seeing it uh, from, from that angle? Because uh, you must have never thought in a, in a month of Sundays he was going to attempt to go on goal from 40 yards. I'm looking at Harrison Reed, and I'm thinking to myself, yeah, do you know what? He's teeing up Mitro here. I just hope that Mitro is going to be able to head one back on goal and uh, who knows, perhaps score what's going to turn out to be a match-winning goal. That's what we're hoping. I don't think there was anybody, perhaps with the exception of the players and coaching staff, who felt that he would shoot from that sort of range, that sort of distance out. I can't begin to think just how difficult that must be, what a tough skill it must be to execute what he did. It was perfect execution, wasn't it? Absolutely fantastic. It was kind of nice for us because I think I just managed to murmur something before Jim went absolutely ballistic. I thought it was going to go in as soon as he struck it because he struck it so well. Yeah. What was it like for you, Ivan? What was it like for you? What was it like for the fans? Because we had a slightly better view of the fact that we were allowed to be at Wembley and for everybody who wasn't allowed to be there, what was the moment like when you're watching it on your telly? I can't begin to imagine. I was, uh, I'm not going to, I'm not going to lie to you. I had drunk an awful lot. I was, um, I was incredibly um, uh, cut, I think is the word. Uh, but I, um, it, it kind of, it was almost a bit in slow motion for me. Watching, we, we, um, we had a few mates of ours, we were watching it on the big screen. And um, yeah, I mean, it, it just didn't feel like it, it could have gone in. When it hit the back of the net, you're like, how, it, it took such a moment, it took such a long time to, for it to kind of compute that it had happened. And how it had happened. It was just, it, it was too far out for it to have worked. It, I don't know. Yeah. It was insane. I celebrated hard. I'm not going to lie to you. I, I, I tweeted a lot of very embarrassing videos that night. And uh, yeah, I celebrated very hard. But it was wonderful. A genuinely wonderful, wonderful feeling. And then to, to watch him go on and score a second. Um, did, you, um, <laughs> did you say anything to him? when uh, After the game, after the final whistle, he scores the second. Uh, what was it? It was the... It was the um, Three minutes into into added time at the end of you know extra time. What do you what do you say to him, Harrison? You know the guy's just scored two goals at Wembley. He's um, yeah. you know and he's not known for his goal scoring either. I don't think anyone was was talking. I think everyone was just shouting and screaming to be honest. But later on that evening, I think quite a few people said to him, "Do you realise what you've done here?" Um, and I don't think he still does to be honest. Um, no. I don't really know how much. I don't really think he knows how much of a hero he was that night and. To do that on that stage is, is a special thing, um, and he's it's all the hard work he put into the season. Um, and when he was running forward for the second goal, I was thinking, Joe, please just stop. We need to defend this lead here. Um, and then he goes and starts it in, and the feeling there is just is unexplainable. Um, but touching on that what you said, I think long finish as well. Yeah, the touch and then the finish with his right foot. Um, but touching on the first goal, it was slow motion for everyone. I think if you watch. To knock out, knock out the back stick. He doesn't realise it's gone in for about three seconds. Yeah. Um, I don't think anyone could quite believe it. Uh, and the videos that were sent into into me from my friends and stuff watching it, the delayed reaction and the celebrations was, was funny to watch. Oh yeah, it, I mean it was it was unbelievable. It really was unbelievable. And I'd already celebrated again. I'd had a few drinks, but I'd celebrated and embarrassingly sort of run off, uh, sort of around this. Uh, I was outside watching it. When uh, Niskins had a, a free kick, didn't he? Was it in the second half? Yeah, that kind of hit the side of the net. Yeah. Yeah. And I celebrated so hard. Like, I was convinced that had gone in. So I was kind of maybe a little bit sort of holding back. And so when that 40 yards are winning, oh, my God. What a yeah, goal. Think, what a goal. I think every time Keba steps up, I think everyone's expecting, the, expecting a goal now, aren't they? Oh, yeah. Oh, without a doubt. Uh, well, I'm, I don't know what, what happened to him at the end of the season. He just suddenly... Uh, hey. I found his, uh, his his free kick boot, didn't he? I mean, he just just unbelievable with these kids. Right, we'll move we'll move on quickly to our uh, our third big talking point, 
and it has to be obviously promotion uh, to the Premier League. Um, first up, Harrison, um, what, what was your feelings when that final whistle went? I've tried to explain it to so many people. Um, just relief and elation. Um, all the hard work that we had put in. Um, and then obviously they got the goal before, just before the final whistle and you start to think, oh no, please don't. Um, when the, the ball's gone back to the keeper and it's gone in the air and the, the whistle blown, you just see everyone running down from the bench. And I don't know what, I don't I think a runner done a 360 and then ended up celebrating with Betts and Marek. Um, I missed everyone else, but um, no, the, the feeling, is, I cannot explain it. Um, unbelievable. What's it like being um, such an important part of Scott's plan? Some, you know, you became such a vital, vital part of our team. Um, to know that at that final whistle, there's a chance after all that work and the journey you've been on, you might just end up going back to your parent club. What, what does that feel like? It's a strange feeling, actually. Um, obviously, at that moment in time and uh, after, the, after the, the game, I was... In my mind, I was going to be a Fulham player, and um, but there is parts of the, of the of the process for the transfer where you're thinking, okay, maybe it's not it's not going to happen. Um, and then obviously you think about all the hard work you put in for the for the club, and it'll be obviously a bit disappointing not to, to come back and enjoy the to enjoy what we achieved and get back into the, the big time in the Premier League. Um, but in that moment, I was never thinking about my parent club or anything like that. I was fully focused on I'm going to be a Fulham player next season. How long did celebrations go on for? I'm going to let you into a secret. I couldn't celebrate. <laughs> I, uh, I don't know what happened to me after the game. It was just the exhaustion combined with the, the celebrations tipping me over the edge. And I think it was by the time the game finished, half an hour later, I was in my bed fast asleep. <laughs> um, I mean, yeah. really? I, I don't know what to say. I mean, kind of no, no. Uh, we made up for it the next day. Um, what did you get up to the next day? Uh, we just met up as a team and... Um, had a few drinks and spoke about obviously the the night before and um, cracked on and had a good celebration. And how was Scott as well after after the final whistle? Yeah, he was. I think everyone saw he was quite emotional and I think yeah. that comes from uh, it was a long season. It was a, it was a difficult season. It probably couldn't have thrown much much more at us as a as a as a team and him as a manager, especially in his first full season. Um, yeah. And I think the overriding feeling for him was. He was so proud of us and what he achieved also. I think it was a five win or another. Um, so I think, yeah, he was, he was uh, quite emotional, but it was, it was great to see. And did you, uh, I don't know, you might have seen this, Jamie, knocking around online, but there, there was a wonderful clip because it was such a beautiful, heartfelt speech. And I was, um, after, the, after the final whistle, and I was proper choked up listening to it. And then someone put it to uh, the streets, dry your eyes. <laughs> Did you see that? I did. I saw it, yeah. And do you know if Scott's seen it? I don't know. You probably would have seen it. I'm sure he's seen it. Works it really well, isn't it? Isn't it? Yeah. Scarily well. Uh, Jamie, how how were you at the final whistle? Well, I'll tell you what, we were relieved because we were delighted to be there. And it was a long season. It was a truncated season, wasn't it? With uh, the hiatus in the middle there and not being able to at one stage or fearing at one stage that we might not get the opportunity to finish it. So it was a job well done and it was almost like culmination, tears in the eyes, just genuine excitement and not only excitement for the fans, but real excitement for the players because Harrison can obviously touch on this and will have a uh, far greater knowledge of it than, uh, than you and I, Ivan. But we get to see the players at fairly close quarters and there really is that great camaraderie, isn't there? You look at the players, the way they all get on and it's not as if they're sort of forced together. They want to be together and you can really see that uh, Scott has sort of harnessed and it's still a, a great sort of belief and determination within the group. Yeah, no, I, I absolutely. I, I, I couldn't agree. It's, it's, it's lovely to... to to see that team spirit and it's going to be I mean I, I suppose um, sort of looking looking on now to the Premier League uh, I suppose that team spirit is more more uh, important than ever you know especially when you go up you know, you, you, the first game is Arsenal at home it's a tough start to the season you know and, and you know there, there's a, obviously there is a strong chance that we, we're not going to come away with necessarily three points um, has Scott done anything to kind of um preparing for bouncing back. I think that's probably um, 
a skill in itself, isn't it? In, in, you know, when you're in the Premier League. Yeah, not as not as yet, not yet. Um, I'm sure it will be something that he touches on. But at the moment, the, the words coming out of the manager's mouth is we're going to take this head on and we're going to go into every game positive, like we have, like we have done uh, last season. You obviously know it's it's a different challenge this year. And the quality is and that is another level. Um, but the, the 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 words coming out of the manager's mouth is we're going to take this head on and we're going to we're going to go into every game and be fully confident and implement our style of our style of football and. And really take it, take it on. And are you feeling confident ahead of Saturday? Do you feel yeah, ready? I feel, feel ready, getting there. Um, I missed the first three or four days of pre-season, um, unfortunately, but I was in today um, topping up. and um, It's been a good couple of weeks getting, getting the hard work in and, and getting ready, and, um, and we're working really hard. Nice. Are you excited to, to be back in, in, in the Premier League? Yeah, definitely. It's, it's everyone's dream. It's, it's where you want to be playing your football. Um, it's just such a shame that we obviously we, we won't be doing it in front of a, a packed crowd. And, yeah. um, but it's, it's, it's an amazing feeling to, to be kicking off the Premier League season on Saturday at 12.30. Um, and it's, it's obviously a great game to start with Arsenal at home. And, um, we're really looking forward to it as a group. Uh, we're confident and, and we'll stay that way. Jamie, Arsenal at home, uh, a, a big, big game to start our campaign. Um, what are your what are your takes on it? I think it's a good and a bad game in many respects. You can kind of look at it whichever way you take it, and I'm very much a glass half full man. So I think it's a great opportunity. Arteta did a wonderful job, didn't he, as Arsenal manager last season? He went in after an I Emery, and I think he really managed to garner a great team spirit, similar to what Scott did when he got the opportunity at the back end of our Premier League season. Things weren't right at Arsenal which kind of meant that as soon as a new manager went in, he put his stamp on it and he proved to be successful. He knew the club, having played for the club. And I think the players quickly sort of realised that he had a good idea of what was required. He's very much a, a player's manager by all accounts. Obviously, he's been recently finished playing. So I think he's done a wonderful job as Arsenal manager. The fact that Scott had the opportunity at the back end of our last Premier League season, I think that gives the team a real fighting chance. And there's great belief, isn't there, within the group. It took us a while to get going after the uh, problems with COVID-19. We didn't get the results that we wanted for the first couple of games. And then the players really hit their straps at the back end of the season. Make no doubt about it, we've got a very, very strong playing squad. Arsenal, they're a wonderful side. They really are. We've mentioned about the manager going in there doing a great job. But I really think that we can surprise some teams during this current campaign or the upcoming campaign with the players that, uh, that Scott's got at his disposal, Ivan. I'm nice and confident. And does it... Does it help going in, would you say, Harrison, as, as the underdog? So often in the championship, we went in as favourites for pretty much most games to, to take all the points. In a way, does, does, it, does it sometimes take the pressure off to go in uh, as, as, you know, as the underdog with a game like Arsenal? Yeah, I think, as it's, like you said, it's, it's a different uh, feeling going into the games. Um, as the underdog, it's, it's, a, it's a great feeling. The pressure's, the pressure's off surrounding you but obviously we know as players it's pressure to perform and, and to get the points um, yeah. but like you said it's, it's a totally different feeling um, going into the game and like uh, Jamie said I think we can surprise a lot of teams this season Nice I hope so and next up as well after that we've got Leeds as well mm -hmm. uh, again I mean are you excited to be playing them you've played them a few times now but excited to play them on uh, you know on, 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 on the biggest stage as it were Yeah it's going to be great um, going back to Ellen Road and I think we owe them one um, we uh, obviously didn't get the result um, last time we was there and we're going to go back there and hopefully off the back of three points uh, against Arsenal going to Ellen Road and um, it'll, be a, it'll be a great game. Fantastic. Right, we've got, um, we've got some fan questions for you now. Uh, we opened up to Twitter let them know uh, we were having you on today. So uh, loads and loads of questions to get through. Are you happy to answer some for us? Yeah, of course. Fantastic. All right, so we'll start with... Uh, Eddie at Eddie FFC. I want to know what's your favourite league game of the season, excluding the playoffs, and why? My favourite game. Um, I think I'll go back to to the two one victory against Leeds, twenty um, first of December. I think it was. Um, yeah. It was a massive game for us. Um, we've kind of felt that they were getting away from us a little bit, the top two, and um, we felt the pressure going into the game and. Um, I think it was my first game back from injury. 
Um, and we obviously got the 2 1 win. It was a great game. It was a great atmosphere at, at the college. Um, I remember that um, very clearly that game. So I'd say my favourite game of the season, barring the playoff, would be the Leeds game at home. Good answer. Jamie, do you have a favourite game from the season? Well, do you know what? I think I'm going to go for that game because uh, it was a pivotal three points. I might go for Swansea, I suppose, with uh, Mitro's late header, which was uh, another special night. But that Leeds game, I was delighted to see Josh Onema score because I think he's a real talented midfield player. Took a while to get going in a Fulham shirt, but when he did get going, he really showed some class performances and he got that great finish, didn't he, to, uh, to help us earn the three points. I think it was always massive when we had Harrison in the team and I think it would have made perhaps an even bigger impact had Harrison not had one or two sort of injuries that, uh, that he picked up. Had he been there the whole season, who knows, maybe we would have, wouldn't have had the playoffs. The positive, I suppose, is that uh, we were able to do it via Wembley again and, uh, yeah. and and get back there. But it might have even been automatic. Such a good presence in front of the, uh, the back four, holding his position, breaking up the play. The real complete midfielder at, uh, at doing his job effectively. Uh, a great, great signing. It, it, it still hasn't quite sunk in, I don't think, that, uh, that we've got him signed on the dotted line. No, it's fantastic. I'll, I'll ask you now, be as honest as you want, Harrison. Honestly, just just blow your own trumpet. Do you think if you had been fit all season and played every game, you would have got, come on, we got hundreds of us, would we have gone up automatically? Yeah. How can I answer that? <laughs> I, don't I, don't know. Know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Oh, I don't know. Um, no, I think the journey was the journey for us this season and I think it was always going to be the playoffs and winning at Wembley and if someone guarantees you a win at Wembley it's the best way to go up so I think yeah I'm, and getting yeah. to silence Brentford as well yeah exactly that always fun always fun uh, another question as well from Georgina Pottinger she said my son Jake plays for Worthing Miners where you played as a junior is that right yeah. uh, wants to know how you progressed your career after Worthing Miners, and do you have any uh, any tips for him? Um, I would say enjoy the football. Um, it gets to a later stage in your career where it's, it's a lot of pressure. So at that young age, it's, it's important to enjoy and um, continue enjoying. Um, I obviously went took a, took a step up to Southampton from Worthing Miners um, at a young age. But I remember my days at Worthing Miners was just fun and it was playing with my friends and... Um, it was definitely uh, the start of my career there, so good luck to you. Nice. Uh, Sam Gardner has uh, tweeted, who's your most underrated player in the squad from last season? I think Josh Onoma, maybe. And he got the plaudits towards the end, but throughout the season, when the pressure was on him, he, he stepped up and he scored some vital, vital goals. And, I mean, I see him every day in training. You don't go near him because you don't get a ball of him. Um, really? Really. Um, so I'd say, yeah, Josh Onomai, he was a very, very important player in our team. And I know it was difficult towards at the start of his, his career with Fulham. And, but I think uh, as the season progressed and he got fitter and stronger and um, got the games under his belt, I think we all saw the real Josh Onomai. It was certainly tough for him as well, wasn't it? At the beginning of the season, um, you know, you got uh, the very positive side of Twitter, you know, where you got the love being sort of fired into your phone at all times. Whereas he, um, there was definitely a point where there was a lot of stick on Twitter mm -hmm. aimed at him. Um, and, I mean, it takes quite a player to not let something like that get under your skin. And not only that, but to progress and become what he's become now. And again, probably one of the fan favourites. Yeah, I think at that stage it was it would have been tough for him. Of course, you kind of want to shut that off and um, focus on the people that are working with you day to day and know that when you get the more games under your belt, you will show everyone. Um, and I think the belief from the manager was massive for him at that stage because he probably would tell you himself that he wasn't performing to the level that he wanted to. Um, and he would have known that. Um, so for, for the manager to stick with him and give him the run of games and um, as we look back on the season and the important games, he stepped up and scored the goals and it's great to now see him um, getting on the other end and the positive tweets and the positive feedback from, from everyone around him. Absolutely. Uh, Sam, FFC1, uh, wants to know, what's your favourite thing to do in London? Oh, go to some food, of course. Where, where are you uh, eating? Where, where do you like to go out to eat? Uh, Nova Club is probably one of my favourites. Um, I find myself there quite a lot enjoying the food and uh, I don't venture into London too much to be honest I'm um, obviously living in Surrey so, so when I do I go for some nice food um, 
and have a nice day at a hotel and have a little bit of shopping the next day. Um, it's nice. great to be close to London, yeah. Again, without giving away too much, whereabouts in Surrey are you? I'll tell you, I'm in Isha. <laughs> Isha? So Isha's yeah. got some, is it, is it, yeah, there's a few really nice restaurants in Isha. Yeah, it's lovely. It's, it's a nice high street, um, walking distance to the high street if you want to know any more about where I live. Um, <laughs> so yeah, no, Isha's nice. There's plenty of coffee shops, um, some nice mm. restaurants. Uh, it's a nice place. No, really nice place. Um, okay, so Sid from Flushed Away. What a Twitter name that is. Uh, he, he wants to know, what's Mitro like behind the scenes? He's an animal. Yeah? Yeah. He's um, one of the first in every day. He's in the gym before anyone turns up. Um, he's in the gym after training. Um, he's always working hard. He's an inspiration, to be honest. Um, I've not really seen too many people work as hard as he does. Um and it's, he gets the rules on the pitch. He scored 26 goals. He's got the golden boot. Um, and he, he fired us to promotion. So he's an animal. He, he works harder than a lot of people. And um, he reaps the rewards. Nice. You mentioned uh, a little bit earlier when, when um, you thought Joe Bryan was going for goal from 40 yards. You communicated with him. Did you do that like a cheeky whisper in the air? Do you guys have like some sort of kind of subtle signal as to not give anything away? I mean, Joe don't have to talk. You know, we, we know what's going on. Just the eyes. Just the, the eyes. eyes. Just nice. The eyes. I like it. I like it. Um, at FFC, Will uh, wants to know, how did you find getting a taste of Premier League level football with Southampton uh, as a youngster between 2013 and 2017? Yeah, it was great. Um, obviously, I was really young. I was uh, learning the game and to be dipped in, in and out of the Premier League at that, at that age is amazing. Um, I thought I was ready to play more, but looking back at it, it was, it was the right decision not to play more depend too much and just to get me a taste and keep me hungry um, and I've got a little bit of experience that I can take into the season so it was it was obviously amazing at that age to be playing in the Premier League and for it to be taken away from me um, and the opportunities to be less um, made me more hungry and I'm, I'm delighted to be back in the Premier League now and I'm ready to put my stamp on it. Uh, Mark Walker wants to know what do you uh, top your Weetabix with on, on the morning of a match day? Now I, he's, maybe he's taking it as red. You have Weetabix. First up, do you have Weetabix? Not on the day of the game, but when I do, I have tons of sugar. Just sugar? Just yeah. pile it high with yeah, sugar? sugar. Yeah, what's, your, like what's your breakfast on match day? Uh, I have a ham and cheese omelette. Um, and then I have some yoghurt after. Nice. And high protein. Uh, high protein, yeah. High protein, yeah. And then I get the carbs now, on. Let's put it on the flip side. Jamie. Match day, breakfast. What are you having? Me? Listen, look at the figure that I've got. It's got to be full English, hasn't it? I've got to do it because the boys can't. That's my excuse anyway. Yeah, no, I'm with you. I'm with, it's tradition, right? It's tradition. Old school, got to be. Exactly. Um, okay, uh, Paul Hitchens wants to know, how did you get stuck in a car wash with Tom Kearney? <laughs> Oh, so me and after lockdown, me and TC used to pop to the, to the local garage, um, grab a bite to eat a little coffee, and I decided to get my car cleaned. Um, it's a bit of a dodgy car wash, to be honest. So I took my car in and pressed the button, put the code in, and I'm sitting there relaxing, having some food, and all of a sudden the, the barrier starts coming towards my car and just stops dead. I'm thinking, oh, no. Um, this, if this doesn't stop, it's going through the windscreen. So man, it stopped. Jumped out with my, my slides on, feet soaked because it was obviously pouring the water in there. Um, managed to slip out the back and get in there and tell him to, to fix it up. So yeah, it was a it was a driving car wash and it just packed up. Wow, mm. that's nice yeah. though. So you 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 guys used to you get in the car and go have a little bite to eat and stuff together. Well, yeah, with obviously lockdown, it was in and out. You couldn't you couldn't stay around the training ground and. Um, Obviously, they gave you a wrap and some food to go away with, but sometimes you want to get extra in the garage. So we go the same same way home. Um, so we used to see each other there a bit um, and just have a little chat. No one could, and obviously social distance, of course. Um, of course. Yeah. And he found it very, very funny that I was stuck in the car wash. So let's have a look. Adam, 1879, wants to know, who's the quietest player amongst the Fulham squad? Player. I'd say maybe Heck keeps himself to himself. Yeah. As it were. Yeah, I'd say. He, at the start, definitely. He's, he's a bit louder now. Um, but Heck's quite quiet. Um, 
You sort of expect a centre back to be quite noisy, sort of yelling orders, no? Yeah, you do, you do. But he's not. But he's quite, he's quite quiet, <laughs> quite reserved. Yeah, no, in training and stuff, he's obviously on it and loud. And when he comes off, he's very, very chilled out. And it's, yeah, you don't really hear too much from Heck. No. And congratulations to him. He's just had a baby girl, isn't he? Yeah, he's he's, he's been uh, fair play to him. He's been coming in and driving straight off to get back to, to the baby. And um, congratulations to him and his, his girlfriend. Yeah, yeah congratulations. <laughs> Uh, Andy Marshall, we've got a few more. Uh, Andy Marshall says, uh, do you like the new kit? And he also says, can you show it to us? Now, we're recording this uh, about 2.30. I believe the kit was released about 12 minutes ago. Um, so, first up, have you seen the new kit? I've seen little bits of it. It's been around the training ground. few of the lads been trying it on. Yeah, um, what's your thoughts on it? I love the, I love the home shirt. Yeah, home shirt's lovely. I'm not sure the yellow's going to go too well with my uh, hair. <laughs> it's very well I don't get me wrong sometimes those kits yeah. are, are, but Jamie first up have you seen the home and away kit I've had the opportunity to see them both and I tell you what I don't think it matters what kit that man Harrison Reed is wearing you know that he's going to you'll pull it off style wise I'm sure I'm sure I'll go. I mean it takes it takes quite a man to pull off bright bright yellow mm. I, don't think I've got the skin, I don't think I've got the skin complexion for it either to be honest no I'm yeah. the same. I'm I, I'm a little bit too pale to pull off. I mean, there's something about like a couple of times we've had really bright away kits. There was a point where Fulham had a bright orange away kit, yes. and it really grows on you. They're really nice. And there's something about they're quite striking. So I've got a feeling the away kit uh, might end up being really popular with the fans. But there's something quite classic about the home shirt. Yeah, I like the home shirt. It's, it's good. It's top. Yeah, really nice. Uh, Dylan Shavas wants to know: Have you got any uh, pre-game superstitions? Any rituals? Um, towards the end of the season, I, I had some actually. I was wearing the same trainers to the game. I was kind of the same socks on before the game. Um, I always do right right boot, then left boot, and I always do right shin pad, then left shin pad. Um, but yeah, I, I developed uh, the same trainer uh, going to the games in, in, after lockdown. So but I've been there long. I've been there long. They're in, they're in the new wardrobe. Was that is that the first time you've ever done anything like that? If it's only just sort of developed when you've been playing with uh, you know previously for other clubs, did you ever have any superstitions? No, not really. It was it was always right boot, left boot, right shin pad, left shin pad. Um, but yeah, I ended up with the trainer for some strange reason. It was just in my head that I had to keep wearing them because um, the performances were good, um, and, I, and especially going in, going to Wembley, I didn't want to didn't want to change, and um, it worked. Yeah, nice. Nice, I like that. Jamie, have you got any pre-match rituals? Well, Jim and I got into the habit where we started shaking hands with each other. And obviously, with okay. social distancing, that made that very, very difficult. So we decided Done. to give each other a kiss. Uh, no, we didn't really. What we did is uh, we, we just sort of exchanged pleasantries with uh, each other from uh, a couple of metres away. No, just the shaking of the hand, really. It's nice to perhaps chat with some of the players as we come round uh, pitch side. We might get the opportunity to see the boys warming up and always give them a uh, little good luck message and then chat to the likes of yourself and some of the other guys who are uh, working round on the far side with us. At the back end of the season, we were more in the press box. We might get the opportunity to, uh, to chat with some of the other members of the press and just sort of get a feeling with, uh, with how it was going to be. And you could always sense it. Certainly, I think that was instilled in the players from Scott that they had their game faces on and it was genuinely genuine belief. Harrison said that they realised it was going to be a Wembley season, you know, i.e. the opportunity of going through the playoffs, perhaps getting to Wembley. I think everybody kind of realised and perhaps felt at one point that that might be the culmination to the season. And again, it proved to be we really enjoy playing at uh, Wembley Stadium and all the time the results keep going our way. Very, very good. Yeah, everything from start to finish just went to uh, Fulham's way, didn't it, throughout the campaign? It really did. It really seemed to, didn't it? Towards, uh, especially towards the end, like you said, it didn't all start. It's, those first couple of games out of lockdown weren't, weren't, you know, got us worrying maybe a little bit, and then just things seemed to click. You know, we sort of then came out firing. It was brilliant. Um, a couple more questions now. Final two. Uh, Chicken Wizard wants to know what can you tell us about your former Southampton teammate Mario Lamina? He's obviously signed for us on loan. Yeah, he's a top player. Um... He's a real box-to-box -box player, very, very powerful. Um, and I think when he's at his best, he's, he's, he's driving past players, he's 
breaking lines and um, he's going to be a very exciting player to watch and to play, to play alongside the season, definitely. I look forward to seeing him play. Um, and final one, I thought I'd end with this. This is always fun. Uh, we get this actually a lot, this sort of tweet, but at Fiery Fulham wants to know, uh, who has the best dress sense at the club and who has the worst? We'll start with, in your opinion, who's the best dressed at Fulham? Ooh, I will go with Marcus Bettinelli, the best dressed. Yeah, he's pretty yeah. slick. Yeah, he's pretty slick. He's um, yeah, I like his gear. He's, he comes with the two pieces sometimes, and he comes with some some, some nice uh, some nice pieces. So Marcus Bernelli definitely up there. Okay, um, worst, worst dress is difficult because some people put effort in, some people don't. Um, well, he's not one I want to want to cross here, but maybe Abu Bakar Kamara. <laughs> I, I mean, puts too much effort in, to be honest. Him or Cabano, actually. Some of the tracksuits that Keba comes in, uh, not really up my street. Um, so, yeah, I'd, I'd say Abs or, Ab, Abs or Keba, uh, uh, right down yeah. there. I mean, they're out there, aren't they? Those, uh, it, takes, it takes a particular confidence that I don't possess. Uh, it sounds like you don't possess as well, Jamie. Yeah. I don't know about you, but to pull, I off, certainly don't. <laughs> to pull off some of those tracksuits that um, Abubakar Kamara um, shows off on Instagram, it, yeah, it takes a particular confidence, right? Spot on. Yeah, it's <laughs> I think so. Uh, all right, I think that's it now. Uh, that's it for uh, our first uh, Monday night fun fix of our Premier League campaign. Uh, thank you very much to uh, our guest, Jamie Reed. Thank you very much, Jamie. Thanks, Ivan. Always lovely to be here. Uh, lovely to see you again. Uh, and enjoy the weekend as well. Uh, and of course, uh, thank you very much as well uh, to Fulham midfield general Harrison Reed. Uh, best of luck for this weekend and the season ahead, Harrison. Will you come back on uh, later on in the season? Certainly will. Thanks for having me, guys. No, it's been an absolute pleasure. And, uh, and thank you for eventually signing that thing. Appreciate no it. <laughs> uh, right. Uh, we'll be back in a couple of weeks. Uh, until then, take care. See ya.